What's going on, everybody? Mortem here, this time bringing you a guide in Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous for finding and restoring all of the Storyteller's artifacts in the game. A couple of quick notes, these are not to be confused with the Crusader relics that you will find through the Crusade mode, which is a separate video I need to do, to be honest. These are, in fact, the shards of artifacts that you can find throughout the game. There are six in total that you can then bring to the Storyteller to have restored into working magical items. This is a returning system from Kingmaker in which the Storyteller did the exact same thing for us. However, they made a few adjustments to make this significantly easier, especially in terms of inventory management. So with no further ado, let's jump right into this. Now the very first artifact you are going to find is the broken gold buckle, which can be restored into the holy symbol of Iomade. But first, we have to find the shard. We're actually going to find the shard in Act 1 in Market Square. You have to go to Market Square as part of the game. However, in the bottom left corner of that map, you can find a house that is enterable. You'll have a fight with at least one Brimarak in there, which can be a little frustrating early game, especially on higher difficulties, so be prepared for fire damage. But on the shelf nearby, you can find the broken gold buckle. Now, if you return this item to the storyteller in Act 1, he tells you that he needs five vials of magic essence to restore this item. You can find vials of magic essence, or just magic essence, as you play the game. There is, I believe, six in total in Act 1. You need five of them. However, some of them are available during the end of Act 1, which requires you to complete the entire act before you can have this item restored. And at the start of Act 2, the Storyteller will actually leave your camp. So if you talk to him right at the beginning and you have the vials, you can have this restored right at the start of Act 2. And I suggest you do so because it is a very good item. And truthfully, one of the best relics we can actually get from this process. Now, the item itself is called the Covenant of the Inheritor. It is a belt item that you have to toggle on and off, and all party members in a 30-foot area get a plus 2 bonus to caster level checks made to overcome spell resistance, and their weapons become good aligned and count as if they were made of cold iron. Now this particular item actually belongs to Queen Galfrey, and you can choose to give it back to her if you wish. However, you don't need to, even to romance her, you can actually keep it, though it does help you out if you give it to her. And while the aura itself is a pretty good boon, the plus two bonus to caster level checks for spell resistance, the main draw here is making your weapons good aligned, as we are mostly fighting demons in this game, which means their resistances tend to be bypassed by good aligned weapons, which is just a very good buff to have, so I'd recommend you keep it. That said, again, you have to toggle this item from your character's belt, and whenever you switch areas, it does have a habit of turning off on you, which is not what it's supposed to do, so I believe that's a bug but something to keep in mind. Now, next up on our list, the second one we can get a hold of is the Antique Ring. Now, we're going to find the Antique Ring as part of Sila's companion quest in Act 2, that is to say, in the same area. One of the crates nearby, as you're searching that small map, will have a shard of an ancient ring, which can be restored. And once we tell the storyteller about it, which will actually require us to wait until Act 3, simply because he's not with our camp, as I mentioned earlier. The storyteller will explain that in order to restore the ring, he needs four vials of magic essence and two bars of cold iron. Now, you won't be able to contact the storyteller until you deal with some main quest stuff in Act 3, where he will then rejoin your crusade and be available to restore items for you. Once you bring these materials to the storyteller, he will craft the Shard of the Ring into the Ring of Summoning. This will grant the wearer the ability to summon either Axiomites or Soul Eaters, randomly selected once per day, as if they were summoned by a Summon Monster 8 spell, with a caster level check of 15 and DC of 22. All allies, including the wearer of the ring, also gain a plus 2 bonus to weapon damage rolls and a plus 2 bonus on saving throws against attacks made, or effects created by chaotic creatures. Again, a very, very good boon, as pretty much everything you fight in this game is chaotic. The ability to summon the monsters is nice, but not amazing by any means. However, the plus two bonus to your damage rolls is okay, and the plus two bonus to your saving throws against attacks made or effects by creatures is just a flat plus two to your saving throws, pretty much, because of all the chaotic creatures. But that brings us to our third item. Now, much like the first item, which I should have mentioned, this is also missable. The first item is missable because after you leave Act 1, you cannot return to that house, though you can return to Canabras later. 
During Act 2, during the Siege of Dresden, we have the opportunity to pick up our third artifact. If you miss it during the Siege, this item becomes no longer available. However, during the Siege, if you head to the dungeons where you will find Arushale locked up, in another cell nearby is an insane prisoner. If you open the cell, this prisoner attacks you, and on their corpse, you can find a broken gauntlet, or a shard of a broken gauntlet. Now, much like the ring, you have to get the storyteller back in your camp in order to be able to do anything with this, but once you bring the item to him, he'll explain that he needs one magic essence and four bars of cold iron, as well as two vials of demon blood in order to restore the broken gauntlets. Now, restoring this item gives you broken gauntlets. These will grant the wearer's animal companion, as well as the Azada Dragon Ivu or the Lich's Skeletal Champion, a plus six to their strength. However, at the beginning of the battle, that creature must pass a will saving throw of 17 or start attacking party members. If the initial saving throw is failed, they get to make a new saving throw every round to stop the effect. So a huge bonus to strength, but at a pretty great cost if the creature doesn't have the will to make that saving throw, though Ivu likely will probably not have a problem making that throw. Now next up on our list we have the boots. So this is not technically missable, you can actually get it even in the later stages of the game during Act 5, however it's first available in Act 3, and it is missable more so because you might not realize how to get it, but eventually the game is going to send you to an area called Winter Sun. You'll wind up here on one quest or another, and in this area you'll find standing stones, and these standing stones will require a skill check, usually Knowledge World I believe, to understand the writing on them. Now if you have somebody like Ninio with you this shouldn't be too big of a deal to pass, but once you successfully translate all of the standing stones in the area, one of them is in a cave nearby by the way, I believe there's about a dozen or so, if you're paying attention, one of these stones will actually have told you to find the heart, and nearby in the sort of lake area of the map, you will find a heart-shaped rock, and upon reading all of the standing stones, there will be a lootable object here that will then give you the shards of the boots, which is like a tattered leather scrap or something like that. And upon bringing these boots to the storyteller, he'll explain that he needs three vials of magic essence, one bar of cold iron, two vials of demon blood, and two hides of magical creatures in order to restore the item. Now you don't really start seeing hides of magical creatures until Act 4, so it'll be a little while before you get to restore this item. However, once you do, you can make the item Ronex Sacrifice. These boots of dexterity plus 8 grant their wearer a plus 10 bonus on mobility and athletic skill checks, and also doubles the bonuses to AC, attack rolls, and reflex saving throw from the haste spell if it's cast upon the wearer. However, if the enemy confirms a critical hit against the wearer of these boots, they become stunned for 1d4 rounds. So a potentially very, very helpful set of boots. However, getting stunned for 1d4 rounds is a huge negative, so something you might have to be prepared to play around if you want to use these boots. Now, fifth on our list, we have probably the one the most people know about, simply because it is part of the secret ending, which I won't be explaining too much here. However, the fifth artifact we can find in Arilu's lab. This is another place you will be required to go by the main story. Your mythic path will typically lead you here. And once you find yourself in Arilu's lab, just a bit west of where you actually enter the map at, in a circular room with a dead Nalfeshni, on a shelf nearby, you can find an ancient scrap of script-covered leather. This becomes our fifth artifact, and when you bring it to the storyteller, he will explain he needs five vials of magic essence, two bars of cold iron, two vials of demon blood, and three hides of magical creatures in order to restore this item. Now, as I mentioned, this is probably the one people will want to do the most, because it is, again, connected to the secret ending, and you really need to have it made by the time you go to Is in Act 5. However, what the item actually turns into once you get it restored varies. It actually changes based on your mythic path. So in this example, the Azada can share the bond they have with their dragon, so 50% of damage is redirected towards Ivu. However, Ivu gains an additional DR against everything, with the number being equal to the Azada's mythic rank, which is pretty good. Now, truthfully, the bound of possibility varies in its usefulness, by mythic path, but that's how you get it. And then last but not least, another very easily missable one, because if you don't get it during Act 4, you cannot go back to pick it up. But during Act 4, while you are in Aleutianira, in the upper city map above a mansion, 
that is actually required for Lan and Winduog's quests. If you have a way to teleport up to the roof, which is something I highly recommend in Illusionera, by the way, in order to get around and explore. But on the first level of the mansion, that is to say the roof, you will find this chest. And once you disarm the trap and lockpick the chest, you can find a crumpled demon helmet. Now, once you take this back to the storyteller, he'll explain he needs two vials of magic essence, three bars of cold iron, four vials of demon blood, and one hide of a magical creature to restore this item. And doing so will grant you Shy Lily's helmet. This will grant your character a plus four profane bonus to strength and a plus two profane bonus to AC, which makes it a very good helmet, truth be told, especially for strength-based characters. So there you go. Last couple things I want to mention is that a lot of these items have a ton of lore behind them that the storyteller will explain as you restore them. So if you're into that sort of thing, I recommend you actually read what the storyteller tells you when he restores these for you. And the last thing I wanted to mention, while there is, I believe, technically enough reagents to restore all six of them, that is very difficult to do in one playthrough with the hides of a magical creature actually being the limiting reagent typically as i believe there's only six of them in game if my memory serves but those tend to be the ones you'll have the most trouble finding but all of the items mentioned in the creation of these items that is to say restoring them are only used for this they don't get used in anything else so you should definitely hold on to them when you find them because they're used to restore these relics and while they're all pretty varied in their usefulness the cloak is arguably again the most important because of the secret ending but there you go guys how to find and restore each of the storytellers artifacts in game as well as what those artifacts actually are so hope you enjoyed the video if you did please remember to like comment subscribe subscribe, all that YouTube jazz, but regardless of any of that, truly, just thank you so much for watching. May you wander in wisdom and have an amazing day.